In today's video, we're going to look at how to solve optimization problems in Python using Number. If you don't know what Number is, it is essentially a Python compiler which aims to give you similar computational speed to that of C++. One thing you have to keep in mind when using Number is that not all features are currently available, and generally speaking, if you are used to coding things in a Pythonic manner, this will likely have to change for the purpose of Number. So although this video is going to be purely using Python. I have done a previous tutorial series on optimization in MATLAB, and we are going to be using similar files or similar code that's just been converted to Python during this series. So we're going to start today with the BAT algorithm, and we're going to specifically look at the ACLI function, as you can see in front of you. So if you have not checked out this series and you want to understand the mathematics behind what I'm actually doing here, check out this this uh, this MATLAB series, the link will be in the description. So it's been mentioned that we're going to be using number for this for this uh, for this test. And if we just quickly come to the BAT algorithm here, when we were coding the BAT algorithm in MATLAB, we often had the sort of visual representations of what was happening. So you can see here we had the sort of animation of where the bats all started and how they converge onto the center of the Ackley function. Now, because we're gonna be using number and we can only use certain, certain Pythonic parameters, matplotlib is not one of them. So there will be no visual representations in this video. And if you want to see visual representations of what's actually happening, definitely check out the MATLAB tutorials first. These go into a much broader description so just a brief introduction to using number. I've opened up a function here. It's a python file.py that I've called functions. I've imported numpy as mp, and from number, I've imported float32. So generally, Python does not pre-allocate, or you don't have to pre-allocate data types as you do in other languages such as C++. But since this is a compiler, we have to now take these measures. So when trying to use a number experimental feature known as JIT class, which allows you to do object oriented programming using number, we have to specify each individual construct within that, within that class. So at the moment, I just defined a class known as the Ackley function which I just briefly explained is going to be subject to optimization in this specific video. Now, within the ACLI function, I've defined a series of, well, a, an array that contains a range of X values between negative five to five, and a range of Y values, which goes from negative five to five. And these are both of data type float32. So you can see when we come to the ACLI function here, the search domain is between negative five to positive five in both the X and Y, hence the reasoning for, hence the reasoning for these values. We've also set the local minima, or the global minima, this is the lowest value in the search space, and this occurs at location zero, zero. So when X is zero and Y is zero, we receive the global minimum solution for the Ackley function. And you can see that this, this decorator called JIT class is passing in what I've defined as a, a spec, which is a list, and it contains all of these, all of the, the class information corresponding to individual variables, and in there I've predefined what they are intended to be. So this is a float32 one-dimensional array, float32 one-dimensional array, a single float32 variable, and then a float32 which I've done as a two dimensional array, simply for the fact that many optimization functions actually have more than one global solution. So for them, for these optimization functions, we wish to have a larger array, just so we can keep track of the information available. Now my, my query method inside my ACLI class is simply gonna return the solution. So it is the exact same equation listed as the formula for the Ackley function where we've got an input x and y and it outputs the value z 
and the main purpose of this optimization function is to try and locate the global minima based on x and y inputs which as we already know occurs at zero zero with a value of zero so now if we move on to actually coding up an algorithm as i mentioned we're going to start with a bat algorithm so we're going to import numpy as mp we are going to from random import random and uniform these will be required for uh, initializing the population and also applying random walks and then we're going to from number we're going to import float 32 and integer 32 and then as before in from number experimental import the JIT class when I actually define this the bat algorithm there's multiple internal parameters so I'm going to say JIT class and I'm going to pass in what I'm going to call bat algorithm specification exactly the same as during the the optimization function and then I'm going to define it as being bat algorithm I'm going to define my initializer as self we're going to pass in an optimizer and then I'm going to just define a set of optional parameters here for the number of individuals within the population and then the maximum number of movements I'm going to specify just as a hundred you can tweak these they're just they're optional inputs so we've got function information and from the function information we're going to want to know the range of values which is defined by our function so our function being the ackley so i'm going to say self.xrange is equal to as i mentioned we're going to pass in the optimizer so we know that it's going to be if the optimizer will be our ackley function the x range is going to occur at optimizer x range and then the same for the y range now let's just before we jump too far ahead this is going to throw up some errors because we've not done that whole specification thing that we did at the start which is then passed into our decorator so we need to first start defining this and this is going to be something that you're going to want to build up over the course of over the course of developing your algorithms so we already know that we've got the x range and we know that this is going to be a float 32 and it's a one dimensional array so this is going to be the same for the y range float 32 the bat dynamics so the bat population and the dynamics now we've already defined our population size so we're going to say self population size equal to population size which is going to be our input it's going to be our optional input and then we need to define this upper head which is going to be population size and this is going to be it's an integer 32 value we're going to have to create our population so for this i'm going to create a new method i'm going to call it initialize population and from this we're going to have to pass in our optimizer which is the input variable known as our ackley function and then i'm going to just create a population of empty basically an empty array that has the shape self.population size and we know that we only have an x and y values which is going to be a row of each individual where each individual has two pieces of information corresponding to each column and we are going to initialize this with a data type of mp float 32 i'm going to do the exact same to my fitness so a fitness array is going to be correct that there self dot population size and this is only going to have one returning value and it's going to have a d-type mp float 32 so we're now going to do a a for loop to iterate through so for i in range of self dot population size and then we're going to just populate our 
our population and fitness arrays. So the first piece of information is going to be self.xrange1 minus self.xrange0 times by a float 32 of a random number. So this is where we imported we imported random up here. And then we're going to add to that the original x range or well, the lower x range value and this is how you can generate random numbers between certain ranges so we know that this is this is going to be plus five minus negative five times by our random number and then we add to it negative five and that gives us that that gives us a random number between those, those two values now you can do this using other methods uh, particularly numpy but I find that this is actually computationally quicker and we're going to do the exact same thing but this time for the second piece of information where it is now y range and as opposed to x range now for this piece of information we need to obtain the fitness and the fitness is performed by simply querying the optimizer so we know that we've passed in the optimizer in as optimizer. We know it has this query function that's in the ACLI function. And to that, we just pass in population i0 as our x and population i1 as our y. And from this, we just return population and fitness. Self.population and self.fitness is equal to initialize population and we pass in the optimizer pre-allocate this information in our specification so population and we know this is going to be a float 32 and we know it's a it's a 2d array and the fitness is a float 32 now, although the fitness is technically not a two-dimensional array, I've initialized it with a shape, with a shape of population size by one. So it is actually a two-dimensional shaped array. It's just only got one column. So we know from the construct of the BAT algorithm that we have factors such as the loudness, the pulse rate, the frequency and the velocity of each bat. So we need to do the exact same thing here, but for these but for these variables. So we'll start with the loudness. So the loudness of each bat, and that is just going to be a an array of ones. Again, they're all the same data types, and we now need to do the exact same thing up here. That is all of the dynamic information we need for the bats. So we can now initialize our bat population. So when attempting to just run that code, there was a few, there was a few errors. The first error was I'd forgot to create the, the self handle at the start of the initialized population since this is an internal method and the second one was that I forgot to initialize the self as an input to the initialized population method so once you once you fix these two issues you will see it runs fine so I've run from functions import ACLI I've defined the ACLI function and then I've created the the bat algorithm class and if we look at the bat algorithm population we've got a series of randomly generated bats with x and y locations between our range of values. So this has all got to create the internal parameters. So the internal algorithm parameters. Now we've already defined that we've got set number of movements and that's an internal that is an internally passed uh, parameter which is optional. 
the BAT algorithm then has a range of frequency values. So the frequency range is going to be a NumPy array between 0 and 1, and it's going to have a D-type MP float 32, as with everything else. We are then going to have a loudness decay, and that's going to be a floating value of 0 0.5. Uh, the next parameter is a loudness limit. So as the loudness of each bat is decaying, we want to apply some sort of limit to prevent it going too small, as this can stagnate convergence. And we're going to set a pulse rate decay to be again 0 0.5 and then a gamma value, which is to do with the echolocation um, expansion of the pulse rate emissions from each bat of 0 0.5. Now, these values are sort of arbitrary and you can tweak these internal parameters to adjust the performance of the algorithm. And you want to play around with these values to find values which suit your specific problem. And then we're going to bring out the just a set of optimization results. And these results are just going to be the best position, which is going to be an empty array with shape 1 by 2. And D type is going to be MP float 32. We're going to have a self dot best fitness, which is going to be just a floating value again and a self dot best bat which is going to be an integer value now we've created these new variables we now need to go and pre-allocate them in our specification and that is all of the pre-allocation that we need to perform for this problem. So again, I'm going to just restart the compiler and run this and do the exact same thing again. And we have got an error. So I forgot to initialize the loudness limit like so. So if we again just restart the variables, run our code, and we've compiled, there's no issues at all. So now that we have defined all of the internal parameters for our, our JIT class for the BAT algorithm, we can start to actually run the optimizer now. So we're gonna create another method, which is going to act as our run, which will perform all of the optimization. So I'm gonna just create an internal variable called best fit, which is gonna be self, dot fitness and it's going to look for the minimum value and then I'm going to create a best index value which is self dot fitness dot argmin so we're now going to just iterate through the simulation so we have to say full step in range one self movements plus one now I like to do it as plus one just because it means that the first step is actually step number one rather than obviously index is starting at zero. And then we're going to iterate through the bat in self.population size. And then for each bat, we need to update the position of the bat. So to update the position of the bat, we're going to create a new method called update dynamics. And in the update dynamics, we're going to pass in the self, the bat, and the best. So we're going to update our frequency values. So the frequency of the current bat we are looking at. We then update the velocity using the, using the best known position. And it's the difference between the best bat and your current bat. And then we times that by the frequency of the bat that we just updated.
and then we're going to introduce a temporary position because we only want to update our position if the fitness is better. So self dot population our current location plus the velocity that we have just calculated. So we're going to say that our temporary position is going to be update dynamics. We don't need to pass in self. We just need to pass in the bat and the best index that we calculated up here. So the current bat, the index, and we should be able to return our new updated position. Now we're going to apply a random walk. And we apply a random walk, if you recall from the MATLAB series, when the loudness of the bat is less than a certain value, plus equal self loudness. And we take the mean value of all the bats, and we're going to times that by a float 32 of uniform between minus 1 and 1. And that uniform comes again from the our import of random during the during the preamble. Now I'm just going to quickly copy and paste this code in because it's a bit tedious. But all this does is that this is just going to check the limits of the search space. So it's going to look at the new position and say if the first index is less than our our range, then we make it equal to that range. It just applies limits to prevent us from moving outside of the search space. So we're going to check the fitness of the bat. And we're going to say bat fitness, which is a new temporary uh, uh, parameter. We're passing in the optimizer into our run function. So we now just need to query the, the temporary position on both the X and Y index. And then from the fitness value that we return, we check this fitness to see if it's better than the current fitness of the bat. So if it is, then we update that fitness value. We update the position of the bat. And we start to apply our changes to the pulse rate. So self dot pulse rate decay times by the exponential of self dot gamma times by the current step we are on. And as I mentioned before, we introduced this limit to the loudness to prevent it from going beneath. So what I'm going to say is if the self dot loudness of this bat is greater than the self dot loudness limit, then we will self dot loudness of the bat and we just reduce it by the decay rate. Else, not sure what happened there. Else, we will just self dot loudness So the reason why I'm putting this limit in now is we don't want it to go beneath that limit. And if we are just above that limit, depending on the decay rate, it may plummet beneath that limit. I'm now just going to do a full check for the global fitness. So if the if the bat fitness is better than the bat best fit, then we're going to update the best fit. And we're going to update the best index to be equal to the current bat. And then we're going to just update the, the best values. So self dot best position is equal to position. And we need to reshape this to a one by two. And then self dot best fitness is equal to bat fitness. And self dot best bat is equal to the bat. So that is our rudimentary approach to implementing the BAT algorithm. So what I've got here is just a simple optimization script. Now, all I've done is created optimization.py. I've imported my BAT algorithm from my algorithms. 
and I've imported my ACLI function from my functions. I then call the ACLI function and then call the optimizer class and I specified a population size of 100 with a number of a number of 200 movements. I then call some IPython magic just to perform a time analysis as we run the optimizer. And then I've just got a, a quite dirty print results section. So when we run this script in our IPython terminal, you will see that if we get no errors, we get a wall time of 3.65 seconds. So it took 3.65 seconds to run just the optimizer run function. So that was just the optimizer run. So once we'd compiled the ACLI function and the bat algorithm function and run it, this is the this is the, the overhead, the computational overhead. And you can see the optimizer achieved a best fitness of zero at this position where the global minimum zero. So we were successfully able to find the global solution. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, but 3.65 seconds is quite a lot. But here is where number really excels. So if I just, if I close this out and restart my IPython terminal and we come back to our algorithm here, and if we just comment out the JIT class and then import it again, so we're going to run and do everything all over again. You see 2.61 seconds. You're thinking, well, actually, that's quicker than using, it's quicker to not use number. And that's correct. For the first instance, we run this again. And you see 2.61. So it's very consistent. We run this again. 2.75. So we're hovering around this 2.6, 2.7 second mark, and we're achieving the same results. Now, if we come back here and put our JIT class back on to allow us to use number, and if we just restart the IPython terminal, we know from the, the first test, it's going to take slightly longer. And there you go. So it's taken almost a second longer using, using number so you're probably thinking, well, what's the benefit? That first run required the compilation of both our ACLI function and our optimizer class. Now that compilation has been reperformed, the moment we try to run it again, we get the exact same simulated results with 163 milliseconds, 152 milliseconds, 156. So you can see just how quick this is. And if I now put the population up to 1000, it's still so much quicker. You can see the power of number. And you can see how if you were to be repeating this experiment numerous times, where the computational advantages are.